Hey, Bastish B here for 64K and welcome to another episode of Opening the Shinies, episode 14, Commodore 64 Blowout number 4. And welcome back. So if you've never watched this show before, it's basically an unboxing videos. I've picked up a bunch of Commodore 64 games here. You can see there are three boxes. These bottom two, I think, were individual games. And this top one, I remember, it's got a whole bunch of awesome Commodore 64 games, a whole whack load. I don't even remember how many, at least 10 or so. So we're gonna go through these and check them all out, give a little bit of gameplay footage so you can see what these games are, and uh, yeah, so let's get this thing started. Okay, so this first one up is from Denmark. I got this one pretty recently. I remember what this is. Uh, let's check it out. Okay, and first up is Power Drift. So this is a sealed copy, as you can see, for the Commodore 64. So this was a really excellent conversion to the Commodore 64 by Chris Butler, the Commodore 64 arcade converting genius. I'm going to have a documentary on him coming up pretty soon. It might even come out before this video or maybe afterwards, but you should check it out whether it's coming or going. <laughs> yes, I played this one so much when I was a kid. I thought it was an excellent conversion. I remember playing the arcade. It was like just a manic game and playing the Commodore 64 one. It's quite impressive. And next up is a package from Calgary. When I bought this on eBay, I didn't even realize the guy lived not that far away from me. So uh, when I bought it, like two days later, this arrived already and I was like, whoa, that's like the best shipping ever. And then I looked, Calgary, I was like, okay, okay, but still, um, I think I remember what game this is. Okay, so we got Questron 2. So this was a really cool, awesome RPG from SSR. As you can see, the graphics are really good. This was used, this game was used as like the basis or like the engine of it was used to make Legend of Black Silver, which came out about a year later. So Legend of Black Silver is kind of an improvement on this. This is an excellent game. I played this for quite a bit. I had a pirated version back in the day and eventually um, got to a point where the disc didn't work or there was some little you know, era as per usual, and that was the end of that. And then I got Legend of Black Silver, played that one all the way to the end, finished it. I love it, it's one of my favorite RPGs on the C64. You can check out my RPG top 10 there and check it out, more information about it. Anyway, Questron, this is a really cool game. Let's have a look what's inside. So we got one of these catalogs, this is for all SSR games. If you don't know SSR, they made predominantly strategy and RPG games that there were so many they put out tons and tons on the Commodore 64 so many you couldn't even like remember half of them you got the game disc still in really good condition got the good old instruction manual here a little advert for pools of radiance manual showing all the bad guys and then just a whole bunch of loading instructions and other little things Okay, so here's the package I've been waiting to open. I got this about a week ago. This is from Birmingham in England. This is from the Retro Cabin, that place there. If you saw the last episode, I got a bunch of games from the Retro Cabin before. I mainly get Commodore 64 tape games. It's got a really like massive library of them and they're pretty decently priced. So I'm taking advantage of that as much as possible whenever I've got a little bit of spare cash, which is not very often. If you're into other retro 8-bit uh, kind of European computers like ZX Spectrum and all that, they are covered like massively. So if you want to pick up some of that stuff, you should definitely check out the Retro Cabin. It's awesome. So let's check this out. Okay, so first up is Twin Kingdom Valley by Bug Bite. So this is a graphic text adventure game made by Bug Bite Software. These guys made Manic Mana and some other really cool games. That's the cassette. I've always heard good things about this game, that's why I wanted to try it out. I really like text adventure games, I think they're pretty cool. They're like a weird little subgenre of gaming that has been forgotten completely, but 
This one was really cheap, so I thought I'd just pick it up. And next, we got a game called It's Only Rock and Roll. As you can see, that's clearly supposed to be Elvis, obviously unlicensed. This is the 80s, you can get away with doing anything and uh, you wouldn't get sued. <laughs> you couldn't even try to, nowadays you'll just get destroyed. This was made by a company called KTAL. Um, they made a bunch of obscure games on the early C64's life cycle. I think they mainly did Spectrum games. This is a conversion of a Spectrum game as far as I know. It's actually a rock band kind of simulator. You start out a band and you've got to manage it and uh, make it to the top. It's a little bit like Codemasters Rockstar Ate My Hamster, even though this came out first, so maybe Rockstar Ate My Hamster ripped this off or whatever. But anyway, it's a management game and it's really fun. It's a unique, like, random events occur. You've got to go to concerts, you've got to manage your money, try and make it. As one of these management games, this is actually really fun. It's easy to play also, and you can get into it really quickly. I'd highly recommend you check it out. And next, we have The Goonies. So this game was made by Datasoft. They also made Bruce Lee and Zorro and a whole bunch of other awesome games, Conan. So this is the UK clamshell version. So you got the cassette, you got instructions. This is a really good way of making a licensed movie game. This game is really cool. The two-player option to help each other is excellent. This game is completely different to the NES version, so if you're thinking of that, it's not the same game. These are completely different games. This is vastly superior in my opinion. So if you want to check out something cool, it's got like a lot of elements from, uh, you know, a lot of Datasoft elements. A bit of Zorro, a bit of Bruce Lee, a little bit more puzzle based and figuring out stuff. Graphics are good, the music, it has a really good rendition of the Goonies theme. Um, this is a great game, another classic by Datasoft. And next, we got a game called Fire Track by Electric Dreams. So this is a bit of an obscure shoot 'em up on the Commodore 64, and the Commodore 64 has a lot of obscure shoot 'em ups, but this one, you know, you don't see very often. I thought it was pretty good. It definitely it takes its cues from Star Force, the old arcade game, definitely. It's a bit of an underrated shoot 'em up. So, Electric Dreams, they never really had a good track record for every terrible game like uh, Big Trouble in Little China. They had a pretty good one, like the UK version of uh, Aliens there. So, uh, they were kind of hit and miss, very hit and miss actually. And uh, this was one of the games that I think deserves a little bit more praise. It's quite good, you should check it out. And next up, we've got a game called. Parallax. So this game was released by Ocean. It's kind of a bit of a shoot 'em up and you go on foot, you can land your little spaceship on foot and shoot up dudes. It's really cool, the graphics are good, it's got this like plane field where you can fly high and low and go underneath things. It's a good game, it's made by Sensible Software. They went on to make Sensible Soccer, Micropo Soccer, which is damn good. And obviously the Immortal Whizball. This is an excellent condition. I'm really impressed. It looks almost brand new. Very nice. Okay, so let's jump to layer two of this box. And first up, we got a game called Time Machine. So this game was made by Vivid Image. It was released by Activision. This is a very cool kind of adventure game. It always reminded me of System 3's Tusker. It's got that kind of vibe. It's, the graphics are really good. The graphics were by Hugh Riley. He did The Last Ninja 1 and 2 and tons of other excellent games. Vivid Image also did Hammer Fist, an excellent game that you should definitely check out. I don't remember too much more about this game. Uh, Martin Walker did the music, uh, which is great. I remember I uh, played this quite a bit. You can jump back and forward in time, kind of affects the environment and stuff like that. I don't remember much about much else about it. It, you know, it had a lot of puzzle elements and stuff like that. I'm really looking forward to trying this game out again. I've been looking for it for quite a while. Let's see what's inside. So we've got the instruction manual and cassette. Okay, so we're down to two more Commodore 64 games and then a couple of bonus things in here as well. So let's check out the next one. This is Goals and Ghosts. I just love this UK cover art for Goals and Ghosts. It's like completely different than the Japanese or American or any other version there is available. I think it's very cool. 
This game is actually quite good, the Commodore 64 conversion. I don't think it's quite as good as the original Ghosts and Goblins. I think that's a classic. This one tries pretty hard. I think it does a decent job. I mean, that's a pretty big powerhouse of a game to try and convert. Uh, this was released by US Gold over there. Let's check what's inside. Again, we got a little instruction manual and the cassette. This game is definitely worth checking out though. Uh, it's got a really good soundtrack by Tim Folan, who always delivered excellent music. The graphics are pretty good as well. It plays well. It's never going to totally be like the arcade, but uh, I think they did a quite a good job at it anyway. And the last game is... Shadowfire by Beyond. So this is another game where I never owned the original, so when I played it back in the day I kind of figured out the icons and all that and uh, was able to get a decent way. I like the fact that they say this is the first adventure game without text, so they like want to make sure that you understand this is not a text adventure game, it is a kind of a, you manage a team of dudes and you go on a mission, it is uh, pretty cool. I used to remember how to play this game. I tried it out recently and I don't even, didn't have the slightest clue what was going on anymore, which is hilarious. Uh, the reason I got this game, obviously because uh, Beyond games are just awesome to collect. Just look at that cover, the uh, box art is excellent, it's just unlike anything else. This game is excellent, it was made by Denton Designs, these guys made Frankie Goes to Hollywood, which is another excellent game you should check out, it's very unique in its own right. A subscriber to my channel mentioned this game and I'd kind of forgotten about it a little bit and they said I should do a review for it so uh, you know I went and uh, tried it out again and uh, I couldn't remember how to play it at all and I just was terrible at it. Anyway, hopefully this comes with instructions, let's check it out. So just my like, this game does not come with the instructions, it's the only one we've looked at that doesn't. What is cool though is that if you see here yeah, on this red side, it's uh, this is the Spectrum version and if you flip it over you've got the Commodore 64 version, so you've got like both of them in one. That's kind of cool. Okay, so now there's like a couple of bonus items here, let's get rid of that. Uh, in the last episode I picked up a couple of classic uh, Commodore 64 magazines. This is no exception, I've got a two more here, let's get rid of that. i got two issues of Commodore user, so let's take a look here. This is May 1985 issue, it's got the Dam Busters on the cover, very nice. On the back you've got advert for Roland's Rat Race by Ocean. So like I mentioned in the last issue, this was my original Commodore 64 magazine that I used to read, the first one I ever read, and I continued reading it right up until probably 1990. And uh, has a nice little advert for Stop Carnath by Ultimate Play the Game, very cool. So this is an awesome magazine. This was my, basically my Zap64. I did read Zap64 as well as much as I could whenever I found it, but this one was still like a little bit more closer to my heart, so finding this is very nice. And I got another issue here from 1985. This is from August 1985. On the back here you got a advert for the game Ghetto Blaster, which is, totally forgot about this one, uh, very nice, you should check this one out, it's really fun. He has the software top 20 for 1985 on the Commodore 64, I'll read out a few of the, uh, I'll read out the top 6, you got Way of the Exploding Fist is number 1, Soft Aid is number 2, if you don't know what Soft Aid is, it was like a compilation done for charity, it has a bunch of cool games on there, like Star Trader and stuff like that. This one, uh, Dam Busters, very cool. Shadow Fire, we just looked at that. Uh, Pit Stop 2, and number 6 is Impossible Mission. Very nice uh, collection there. So I think I bought the last two issues of Commodore User off their sites. I mean, I'm sure they'll get more, find more, whatever. But uh, there are other magazines on there, Commodore Format and stuff like that. So if you want to check that out, they're pretty cheap also. So you can pick up these classics. These are just so much fun to read through and go through. There are so many games that kind of you just forget about and don't ever get mentioned anymore. And when you slowly go through here, yeah, you remember these classics and you're just like, you should definitely check that one out. Ok 
Okay, so that's it. That's the haul I got. Uh, it's a really nice selection. Thanks for joining me, Bastish B at 64K. I hope you had a good time. If you can like and subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated. I'll see you next time. Cheers.